welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Well, hello, Brother Adam and uh, young people. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to have this time with you. From North Carolina to Hawaii, here we are. You notice I have a sweater on. Quite a difference in temperature, I'm sure. And one day I'd love to know that we'd have an opportunity to meet together personally. And not in North Carolina, but in Hawaii. You know what I'm talking about there. But anyway, I'm thrilled to have this opportunity. I'd like to begin with a song. It's called Herman the Bullfrog. Now I'm going to need your help. I'm going to sing this. Hello, children. Now, how are you? And I want you to say, fine, 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 fine. Okay, you got it? So here we go. Hello, children. Now, how are you? Tell you right now what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you a story written just for you. About a wide-mouthed, blue-eyed, educated, dignified, well-footed, high-jumping, full of pride friend of mine. Herman the Bullfrog. You can find him in the evening, sitting on a lawn, croaking and singing his favorite song, gazing at himself in the waters there, combing and apart his slimy hair. With his long yellow tongue in the wink of an eye, he could sneak up slow, catch and swallow a fly. That's Herman. Herman the Bullfrog. He's got his very own Pawnee Nose Jungle Gym. He's got a hundred tadpoles named for him. Sting the mud and the lily pad. What a wonderful life he has. He can jump up higher than the tallest pine. He can move a lot quicker than the naked eye. Turn a triple somersault laughing all the time. Now one day Lily the butterfly came a fluttering, flitting and a floating by. She said, hello Herman, how are you? Got a thing or two to ask of you. Where you gonna go when you die? Where you gonna be in eternity? And what are you gonna say on that fateful day? Don't you know Jesus lived and died, rose again? Now what old Herman say? Now go on, Lily, why can't you see? I got flies to catch and frogs to meet. There ain't no need to hurry, I got time. So goodbye girl, won't you move along? Don't bother me, I'm having too much fun. Sing your song to someone new, not me. But little did Herman the Bullfrog know that very same moment down deep below there was a one-eyed alligator marking time watching and waiting with a hungry eye. Poor Herman dove and right before my eyes that one-eyed gator caught him by surprise swallowed him whole in the wink of an eye he never had a chance to say goodbye. Now Lily she cried and said with a sigh Herman, I tried, I tried and tried, but you lived your life and died so foolishly. And you were so hung up on frogs and flies and thinking that you had lots of time. It's too late now, it's too late now for you. So boys and girls, please listen good. Don't do like a dumb old bullfrog would. Please don't wait, say yes to Jesus now. And if Herman, he could have a word with you, well, I'm sure he'd say the same thing too. Please don't wait, say yes to Jesus now. Amen. You know, as we listen to that song about Herman the Bullfrog, there's some real life lessons there for us. But here's my first question for you. What was Herman's real problem? Well, his problem is our problem. His problem was pride. What's the middle letter of the word sin? Ah. What's the middle letter of the word pride? Ah. What's the middle letter of the word Lucifer? Ah. Herman had an eye problem. And, uh, you know, we, we all take more than our daily required dose of vitamin I, I fear. And with that in mind, let's pray. We'll jump right into our devotion. Father, thank you today for the privilege to uh, share this truth with your people. And I pray you'd speak to every heart today listening. Speak to my heart as I share. And I know, Lord, and I acknowledge that without you, I can do nothing. So I thank you for your presence and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction 
and a haughty spirit before a fall. Many of you have memorized that verse. But it's true. Someone has said, pride is the mother of all sin. Muhammad Ali was not known for his humility. He was a famous boxer. One day he was on an airplane, and they experienced, they were flying, and they experienced some turbulence, and the pilot came over the intercom and said, ladies and gentlemen, for your safety and the safety of other passengers, please buckle your seatbelts. We're experiencing some turbulence, and we want to take care and safeguard you as best we possibly can. So the stewardess is walking down the aisle, looking left, looking right, as they often do, just to make sure everyone had heard and heeded his admonition to buckle their seatbelts. She came to Muhammad Ali's seat, and he had not buckled his seatbelt. And she said to him, Sir, please buckle your seatbelt for your safety and the safety of other passengers. And he looked at, up at her with his smug look and said, Superman don't need no seatbelt. Well, without missing a beat, the stewardess said to him, Sir, Superman don't need no airplane either. Buckle your seat belt. Well, you know what? What is the mother of all sin? Andrew Murray said that pride is the root of every sin and evil. Christotum, an early church leader, said, Pride is the mother of all evils. So I guess the question is not, do I have it? But where is it? And how much of it do I have? The truth is, all of us have a tendency to think too much about ourselves and too much of ourselves. Most of us take more than our daily requirement of vitamin I. Well, let's define pride first. Webster's 1828 dictionary defines it this way, inordinate self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, rank, or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt and having a critical spirit of others. So, so kind of a, a lengthy definition. But Martin Luther said, I'm more afraid of Pope Self than of the Pope in Rome and all his cardinals. Pride is the only disease known to man that makes everyone sick but the one who's, who has it, someone said. Vernon McGee said, Pride is an attitude of heart that says, I can and I will live without God. Pride is a sinful condition, friends, of the heart we might call idolatry of self, in which case the individual lives independent of God and dependent on self. The sin of pride is a violation of the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before you. We could say that pride is a measure or a manner of self-worship, okay? But what's the cause? Well, the fall. And you can read all about the fall in Genesis chapter 3. You know the story, how Eve was tempted. She, she ate of the fruit. She gave the fruit to her husband. They both ate of the fruit. And therein we have the fall of man. Romans 5.12 sums it up this way. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sin. Charles Spurgeon said it well. That demon of pride was born with us, and it will not die one hour before us. It is so woven into the very wharf and woof of our nature that till we are wrapped in our winding sheets, we shall never hear the last of it. So we know the cause of, of pride is the result of the sin nature that we all have. We're born with that. What's the character of it? Someone who is unsubmissive. Nobody is going to tell me what to do. You know, we see that often in the home, even in the church. Someone who is unteachable. Unteach I know it all. Someone who is unforgiving. See, proud people expect to be treated a certain way, and when they're not, look out. People who are unrepentant. They refuse to admit mistakes. Or when something happens and they do something they shouldn't, they blame others. Um, the words, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me, are seldom, if ever, spoken in their life. But one thing's for sure, prideful people are ungrateful. 2 Timothy 3, we read, this: all, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. There's pride. Covetous. There's pride. Boasters. There's pride. Proud. There is definitely proud. Blasphemers, there's pride. Disobedient to parents, there's pride. Unthankful, there's pride. Unholy, there's the result of prideful living. So we've talked about the call, we talked the cause. We talked about the character of pride. We've now talked, let's look at the consequences of pride. Number one, pride disgusts God. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be undone. 
punished. We read in Proverbs. We, we quoted Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction. You know, pride is destructive. It disgusts God. The mother whale said to her baby whale, Honey, listen to mama now. When you get to the service and start to blow, that's when you get harpooned. All right? Thomas Watson said it this way, an old Puritan preacher, The proud man is the mark which God shoots at, and God never misses his mark. Pride is also defeating. James 4, 6 says, But he gives more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the hum humble. You don't want to get in a wrestling match with God. You're not going to win. What's the cure? Well, the cure is in a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. The reality is we're all prone to pride, and pride is natural. But humility is supernatural. And there will never come a time when we say in our life, Hey, I've got this. I can handle this. Where we take a vacation from vigilance, if you will. So we need Christ. We must be born again. Salvation is the first step. Did you know if you're going to be saved, you're going to have to humble yourself. And you're going to have to understand that you cannot save yourself. That, that you need Christ. And thank God that Christ said, believe, the word says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You must admit that you're a sinner, believe that Christ died, was buried, and rose from the dead as a penalty and payment for your sin in your place and place your faith and trust in Christ to be your Savior. But that's the beginning. And, you know, I know in my life this issue of pride is something I've dealt with all my life, and the Lord is continually working in, in my heart because the, the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. And your heart must be right. That's why salvation is so necessary if you're going to be humble because you need a new heart that only Christ can give you. But then we must submit ourselves to the Lord. And when we are aware that we're guilty of pride, we must repent. We must confess it as the sin that it is. And we must renew our minds. How do we do that? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse himself? How? The Word of God. We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Sanctify them with thy truth. Thy Word is truth. I need God's Word. You need God's Word. We need God's Word every day to cleanse our hearts. And then we need to realize that there are only three members of the Godhead and you and I are not one of them. Can you imagine somebody on life support bragging about how well they're believing, breathing? I can't either. But remember this, a man can receive nothing except to be given him of God. You know, we should live our lives to the glory of God. We should always point people to him, like John the Baptist did when he said, he must increase and I must decrease. You know, we have to realize what we deserve. We deserve judgment. But what have we received? We've received grace, mercy, peace. How do I know that? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So pride is a serious matter. In the song, Herman the Bullfrog, he didn't want to listen to Lily. Nobody was going to tell him what to do. He was going to live for the world, the flesh, and the devil. He was going to go his own way, do his own thing, and he paid a price. The one-eyed alligator took him out because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. I'm going to close with this quote by Spurgeon. O oh man, hate pride, flee from it, abhor it, let it not dwell with thee. If thou wantest to have a madman in your heart, embrace pride, for you shall never find one more mad than he. You may find it in any fashion you may choose. You may see it in the beggar's rags as well as in the rich man's garment. It dwells with the rich and with the poor. A man without a shoe to his foot may be as proud as if he were riding in a chariot. Pride has 10,000 shapes. It is not always that stiff and starched gentleman that you picture it. It is a vile, creepy, insinuating thing that will twist itself like a serpent in our hearts. You see, friends, those are the words of Spurgeon, and he was right. Pride is harmful to your home, to your health, and to your hereafter. Because it is true. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Do you see pride in your heart and life? Be careful. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But God's grace is sufficient. But we have to humble ourselves if we're going to experience the fullness of the Spirit living His life in and through us and in influencing others for Jesus Christ. 
Thanks again for having me. Lord bless you. I hope this has been a challenge and a help to you. God bless.